Hi, my name is Timothy Wright, and I am the National Curricular Coordinator here at the National Building Museum. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to best use the Green Community Teaching Kit in your classroom. I will review the materials included in the kit, explore parts of the curriculum, and reveal some best practices we've observed over the years. Before you begin teaching the first lesson, it may help your students to articulate their own ideas about what the terms green or sustainable mean in the context of the built environment. So what is green? Is being green about behavior? Most of your students are probably familiar with the idea of recycling a plastic bottle or turning off the lights when they leave the room. Is green about technology, like building a more efficient car or developing solar-powered electronic gadgets? Is green about architecture, such as installing a green roof or reusing materials during construction? Or is green about city planning and land use? So what is green? Being green is an idea that if the natural environment is protected and cared for, resources for food, shelter, and clothing will be available to future generations. To make this idea real to your students, we use the design process as an educational framework. They will learn by doing. Your students will work together to define a problem, investigate solutions to that problem, generate new ideas, plan to build a suitable design, produce new content, and at each step, evaluate the outcome. So how does it all work? First, let's take a look at the materials included in the kit. We include everything you need to complete the program in this box. The curriculum booklet. This will be your main resource for implementing the program. This newspaper article introduces the premise of the program. The city of Grayville has a few challenges that students will learn about through this article. Based on what they learn through the Green Community Program, they'll be tasked to imagine and then create a more sustainable city called Greenville. These two posters are included as well. The five big ideas of green building and the five big ideas of green communities. These building cards profile actual structures and provide real life concrete examples of the concepts presented in the curriculum. The same goes for these community postcards. They feature six communities from across the United States. Before actually building the town, your students will use these land use cards to determine which areas will allow for residential, commercial, industrial, or institutional buildings, or which spaces will remain open as public open space. We've also included a few four inch by four inch boxes to get you started on the buildings. Finally, the map. Use this map to plan and ultimately build your new town. Most of the hands-on work of Green Community will be done on this map. The students will plan their city and later place the completed homes, offices, schools, and other structures on the map to form Greenville. There are three main goals to the Green Community Teaching Kit, and the goals are to Increase student awareness of the relationship between people and the built environment. Number two, increase student awareness of the relationship between the natural environment and the built environment and how the two are interdependent. And third, introduce the students to the people, processes, and choices involved in designing and constructing green buildings and communities and how these choices impact the environment. The program is presented as seven core lesson plans. These lessons will require a combined total of about five instructional hours. The seven lessons should be completed in order, but are constructed in a way that you can teach one per day or even one per week. If your school operates on block scheduling, you may be able to combine two lessons into one class period, in particular lessons one and two, or lessons five and six. We have aligned the lessons to the national standards of learning across six subject areas. The curriculum booklet lists all of the standards in detail, including a matrix to match the specific standards to each individual lesson. We consider the kit appropriate for students in grades five through eight, although it has seen successful use in ninth and 10th grade classrooms as well. Let's talk a little more about the individual lesson plans. 
There are four extension lessons, but today we'll focus on the seven core lesson plans. In lesson one, students are introduced to Grayville. Grayville is not an actual city, but one we've imagined based on a synthesis of many real life communities. Grayville faces many logistical and planning problems that are present in communities across the United States. Your student's job is to replan and reimagine a new city built from the ground up. Work with them as they examine some of the present problems, learn new content, and make changes that will result in a new modern city called Greenville. During lesson two, students are introduced to the basics of city planning, including how to define and understand infrastructure, how to describe important city services, discuss transportation implications, and explore the idea of mixed use and zoning. This lesson will give students a basic understanding of common city planning terminology so that they are able to replan Grayville later in lesson four. The students will learn the difference between different land use categories, including residential, these are places where people live. Commercial land use, places where people buy and sell things. Institutional, places where people learn, get help, or receive government services. Industrial, places where things are made, disposed of, or processed. And open or public space, these are places where people play, exercise, or enjoy nature. You will guide students as they debate and learn to decide which buildings fall into each category. For example, a single family home or an apartment building would be categorized under residential, while an office building or grocery store would be categorized under commercial land use. You can discuss ideas about zoning and why it's such an important part of the city planning process. For example, some people would prefer to live in an area which mixes residential and commercial buildings. They may appreciate being able to walk from home to a grocery store or retail outlets. Others may prefer to live in an area with residential buildings only, avoiding the busier streets and noise that could come with a more commercialized area. Both viewpoints are valid. You can also introduce the concept of shared community amenities. You can illustrate this idea by offering an example of a resident deciding not to own a vehicle if his or her community has a robust public transit system. Or another resident deciding to live in a home with a smaller yard or no yard at all if there are public parks nearby. Each student will have different ideas about these quality of life issues and each should share those ideas as the class makes plans for their new community. To help you facilitate some of these discussions, the curriculum booklet includes the teacher information section on city planning basics and a brief history of environmental planning. Lesson three will introduce the five big ideas of green communities, and the students will begin to explore the complexity of issues associated with building a modern green city. They will work in teams to investigate and then report on the green aspects of the communities featured on these postcards. For example, to exemplify the idea of adaptive reuse, they'll read about Highlands Garden Village in Denver, Colorado. This community decided to adapt and reuse materials, existing buildings, and even major infrastructure to build a new, dense, mixed-use urban community. All of this on the site of an abandoned amusement park. During lesson four, students will first work in small groups and later come together as a class to fully address the problems faced by the city of Grayville. They will create their own plan for an improved and greener city. Some of the problems addressed are how to provide clean air and water, facilitate traffic and transit, dispose of waste, how to incorporate natural energy sources, and generally how to manage development. Have them in small groups, incorporating ideas from each member, and later present the small group ideas to the class at large, with the goal of agreeing to use the best ideas in the final plan. Lesson five will have the students transition from the investigation of citywide issues to concentrate on individual structures. You will introduce the five big ideas of green building as students explore the exemplary green buildings featured on the green building cards. 
The purpose of the cards is to provide students with exposure to a range of architectural styles and uses while showing how each building illustrates different ways to implement these green ideas. This lesson will provide the foundation for Lesson 6 as they design and construct their own model green buildings. Lesson 6 is fun. It builds on the foundation laid in Lesson 5 as the students begin to build what will become the new city of Greenville. They need to consider how citizens of Greenville will use each structure, what materials will be part of each structure's design, and how the geography and climate will affect the design. They can even decide if it's appropriate to consider combining multiple uses in the same building, such as constructing a building with residential units on the upper floors and commercial spaces on the ground floor. The students will also be tasked to build an environmentally friendly building. Use the Green Building Scorecard to guide these discussions. The boxes we've included can be stacked or otherwise combined to make larger structures. But before starting Lesson 5, encourage your students to bring in recycled materials as well. Let your students' creative minds go to work here. You can help by providing simple craft materials such as construction paper, markers, pipe cleaners, and wooden craft sticks. These buildings tend to take on a mind of their own and you're sure to be surprised with their ingenuity and originality. You can also help by further exploring green components that will be incorporated into individual buildings. These can include green roofs, photovoltaic cells or solar panels, geothermal heating and cooling systems, wind turbines, and even rainwater collectors. Work alongside your students and build a structure of your own. Follow their plan for Greenville, but create a school, a home, a library, a movie theater, the choice is yours. But your students will enjoy having you participate side by side as you make the teacher's contribution to Greenville. Here are some teachers working on their own buildings at one of our on-site workshops. This brings us to the finale, Lesson 7. This lesson requires the students to synthesize all of the information learned during previous lessons. They will assemble the final city plan by adding their model buildings to the Grayville map. Have your students present their final ideas about the city's plan to the Greenville community. That can be another class or teacher or perhaps your school's principal. The presentation is a great way to start reflection on the entire process. By now, the students will have defined the problems faced by Grayville, investigated solutions, generated and shared ideas, planned a new city, produced structures to populate that city, and evaluated their work. This is the design process in action. One last note, your students' version of Greenville will often reflect their own surroundings, and that's okay. Whether Greenville takes on an urban, suburban, or a rural feel is up to the students. Green community is about incorporating this particular set of ideas about how to build a sustainable community. The program provides the method and the content you and your students will provide the creative and artistic know-how to complete the tasks at hand. Make sure your students take ownership over their Greenville. They can even rename it if they wish. Well, thanks for your time. To learn more about the Green Community Kit and its availability, visit our website at www.nbm.org.